Hey guys, welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. Today we're going to have two special guests on with us, Carlos and Lisa. They're going to go through their life story, how they started, and where they're at now with their business. They are in the trucking industry, so stay tuned to see what they've got to share with us. We'll see you guys. All right, so Lisa, so Carlos, please tell us what you guys do. So like give a backstory of what you guys actually do so the viewers know. For a living right now? For a living, yeah. The okay. business, everything that you guys are doing. Okay, so right now, um, of course, I'm working for SIDS um, as a uh, recruiting manager. So okay. I recruit all of their contractors. While I'm doing that, I'm running my husband's paperwork, part of his uh, trucking business. Um, he has nine trucks right now and uh, looking to expand. So. Oh, cool, cool. So I got a question. So you got nine trucks now. So how did it all start off? Did it start off with like five or did it start off with a, a dune buggy? And then <laughs> we started <laughs> off. No, well, yeah, I might as well say a dune buggy. <laughs> we started off with <laughs> we started off with one. That was years, years and years ago, over 20 something years ago. And um, you had an accident with your first I truck. Had an accident. He had an accident with his first truck. Um, we lost the truck. We lost the truck because we thought we had insurance on it through the company he was working for, and we had no insurance. Yeah. We had to put our life savings into that truck. And then within two weeks, he crashed, he totaled it. Yeah. And the only reason he totaled it was because um, all the traffic on the uh, the um, five what is that interesting the interstate yeah all the all the traffic on the interstate came to a halt, and Carlos had a family full of people in front of him, and next to him in the next lane was another truck like his. It was a dump truck, and he thought if I hit these people, I'm gonna kill them, so he went and hit the truck instead, and since it was full. It totaled his truck. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Wow. So, so we had to. Well, I mean, yeah, it's a lot of a lot of groin pain. So, all right. So after that situation, you know, totaled the truck. I know it's you know set you back financially, especially when you put all your savings into right. one truck, and then you get an accident. You think, oh, the insurance got us. Then the insurance don't have you. So right. what was the next step after that? So how did y'all? So that took y'all back to zero trucks, right? It took us back to zero. So, so how did y'all how did y'all pick up from there, especially with that toll that that put on you? We had to buy a truck on credit. On credit, it was a mm -hmm. fifty two thousand dollar truck. And yeah, we did like we bought like um, almost a new truck. Almost yes, it was almost a new truck. We had it mm, about a month, and the turbo went on the truck. <laughs> so more problems. More problems. We had no money, and I right. said. I said to the company, well, you should be covering this. You know, it's a fairly new truck. So with a lot of my fighting back and forth with them, they fixed the turbo. But during that time, he was out of work. We had no income coming in. Um, right. So we started to use credit cards for everything. Yeah. You know, yeah. use this credit card, use that credit, just moving money around to try and make it. And uh, finally, we got into a hole. <laughs> we got into a big hole because the company he was working for at the time um, for almost a month and a half kept telling everybody, we have your paychecks next week. We have your paychecks next week. Mm -hmm. We have your paychecks next week. Um, they owed us almost around $12,000 by the time. So we had no income coming in. I was paying mortgage, everything with credit. And the company- Oh, wow. So the company went out of business. So I lose my money. Oh, so you never got the money at all. Never oh, got the money. Man. Never got the money, but we kept saying we're not giving up. This is what he wanted to do. He was really interested in doing this. On the other hand, me, I would cry every time, stressed out, thinking, you know, we have four kids. So we were thinking, how are we going to support our family? Um, but we did it. I mean, we got then from there, um, he bought, uh, well, he got with an, another company. He got with um, Silver Sand. Can. Yeah, Silver Actually, well, that was with Silver Sand. Yeah, that was okay. So after that, after that, I jump in. I jump into room uh, six. SIDS. He yeah. applied okay. for SIDS several times. No one would contact him, but he really wanted to work there. So he's like, "I'm not giving up." He kept applying, and finally, they called him. Yeah. Right, um, Alex. I'm, I know I'm taking all the questions. This is very interesting <laughs> to me right here. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, but so something that we talk about on this channel. Uh, 
Carlos, you would agree to this. I know you will. We say the biggest life hack, the biggest, the biggest thing to a financial journey is the partner that you have. Now, Carlos, without your wife, I mean, she went through a lot. <laughs> she went through a lot. And just having that backbone, having that person that's still going to push you. Everybody think it's all about, oh, my significant other has to make X amount of dollars. Really, it's the person that's there that's going to go into the war with you. And when everything turns bad, they're still going to be there. Usually, you know, especially in this world, you know, somebody, you know, say one thing to hurt their feelings. They're ready to leave. You know, you have been through fight. And I mean, you probably know that finance is the biggest reason for divorce, in the, especially in the United States. And you went through multiple things. You know, you went from truck to losing truck to not getting paid to paying mortgages, you know, with credit cards. And I just wanted to point out, and I want to salute your wife, uh, that is something that most people won't do. And uh, just always seeing that, that is something huge. I love seeing, because that's the biggest hack on a uh, financial game. But Alex, go ahead. I, I don't want to take over the whole interview. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, Lisa's a trooper for sure. <laughs> but um, so guys, I got a question. So when you came to SIDS, you started with one truck, obviously. I know how the process works, but um how quickly was it for you getting that second truck it took me a while because we were paying the debt right from the past yeah we had a hundred and fifty thousand dollars in debt from oh. that one problem we had with the truck and then not getting paid we ended up in a hundred and fifty thousand dollars in debt so we had to pay that first yeah and also put in our years with SIDS before someone would trust for him to be able to bring in a second truck. Um, when, right. he, when he was ready to bring in that second truck, <laughs> I was no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said, I don't want to do this, you know? And he said, well, I want to do this, you know? And I said, well, I started coming up with, I don't want to say negative, but I started to come up with, well, what if this happens? And how are we going to do this? Because I wanted to know what our plans were along the way. He was just ready to jump in. But I'm more of a, you know, you have to know what's going to be the plan because of everything we just went through. And uh, right, absolutely. it was, how many years were you there? It was quite a few years. Yeah, to like. I think it was almost 10, 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I think it was so, almost 10 years. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. Alex, I know you want to go into the, the business part of it, but I got to ask. So what was life like that 10 years of Carlos working and then you're trying to pay off that $150,000 of debt? What was the family dynamic like? Did you have one kid, two kids? What was the, how did, how did that work? So we had four kids by then. <laughs> okay. um, we had four kids. We had our kids young. We, we planned that we wanted to have our kids young. So when we were this age, our kids are all grown. Our youngest one is 22. Um, so okay. we wanted to make sure because now we can enjoy life. But right. during that process, I personally felt like a single mom um, because Carlos worked nights. I was working six days. He right. was working six days a week, week. For, ev for all those 10 years. He worked six days a week for the extra money of that one day um, so that we can progress. Um, so we, um, I was working at a Spectrum which at the time had been Bright House and they bought it. It was over right. in Maitland. I live two hours from there. So I drove two hours to and two hours from every day for my position because I had been there 18 years. I had good benefits, which I needed for the children because Sid didn't, you know, he's a contractor. He doesn't get benefits. Right. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I, I did everything with my kids from their school events to um, sitting them down. It was like four kids. It's a lot of kids. So I had them every day sitting at the table as though I was a school teacher after work. By the time I got done with them, it was 10 at night and it was time to get back in bed and start for the next day. Yeah. And keeping wow. them quiet while Carlos slept in the day was not easy. Right. Right. Was wrong. Wow. <laughs> 10, 10 years, 10 years of that, 10 mm -hmm. years of that. So for the people that's watching, just imagine that. People, y'all can't go through a sacrifice for 10 minutes, 10 years, two hours to work, two hours back, 
all the kids' activities, all the schooling, all the tutoring, all the mentoring. Mm-hmm. You know, the husband's gone six days a week. He's sleeping during the day. So kids come home and, you know, kids riled up, right. especially when they're not in school right. and then they having to stay asleep. The sacrifices that's made is, is substantial. And you don't hear many stories about, you know, like this, you know, people actually going through it. You know, you hear people going through it, but then you hear, oh, a divorce. Oh, we just gave up. Oh, we just filed bankruptcy and quit. But y'all just kept going, kept going, kept going. And that's, I think, I believe that's the key to it right there, is just to keep going, no matter what roadblocks going to come. And I always say, only thing that's guaranteed in life is bad stuff going to happen. Being prepared and willing to persevere through them is what's going to make you succeed. Because we can't stop the inevitable. It's true. And and you are going to argue along the way. You are going to have issues yeah. along the way it's it's not a, it's not perfect you know so, so the people right. who are listening it's not perfect but if you have a goal and it's something you really want to do you stick with it and you stick with it together as a team oh that was a great that was a bar right there she should be a rapper that was a bar that was a good um so lisa so i can imagine what you went through um supporting carlos because i i see that in my wife every day but carlos what was your mindset the whole time um because i know thoughts i've had where you fail and then you have to do it and then hopefully it works out and something else comes up so like i mean you get a truck your whole life savings it breaks down or i'm sorry you get into an accident um then you have to buy another truck and then 10 years of just paying off debt. Like, Carlos, what was your mindset the whole time? What pushed you to keep going, basically? My dream, keep going. Uh, there were days that I didn't sleep at all. There were days that I have to stay in the truck. And my wife was telling me, oh, how you do this? And you know, when you want something in life, you just gotta keep fighting for it, you know, and we're still doing it. We are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're still fighting for we it. We do want to keep going as far as we can, you know, and just showing people and like my family. I got family that because it, I got in, into the truck industry, they were um, giving me like telling me bad things about it. Yeah. Oh, right do that because in Colombia, I'm from Colombia, South America. Right. Mm-hmm. Usually the truck drivers is people they don't they, they didn't went to school. So yes. it's, it's like a bad reputation for drivers, you know, when you say you're a driver. And I keep doing it and keep doing it and showing my family that the then when you got a dream that you can do it, you know. Carlos's family, um, when he was going for his CDL, um, were all negative. You're not going to be able to pass the test. Um, you know, when I met Carlos, he didn't speak English. Um, mm-hmm. When I met him, I didn't speak Spanish. Um, I, I am from mm-hmm. Hispanic background, but we spoke English at home. So it was even hard. I understood everything, but I was afraid to talk. So it was hard for us to communicate even when we met, but I taught him all the English he knows. And he taught me all the Spanish I know. And I sp- I speak fluent Spanish now. And um, everybody was just negative, telling him he's not going to be able to make it. First truck we bought, his mom said, uh, oh, that's not going to work out for you. And then we got into the accident. And then it was, yeah, um, See, I told oh, you so. <laughs> yeah, oh, you bought another <laughs> truck. And she saw the truck park here by our house. And she said, I don't know why you did that. That's not going to work out. And I said, Mm -hmm. stop. You guys need to stop. Like, this is going to work out. He's going to make it, you know. And, oh, but, you know, that's not a a good job to have. It was always something negative. And I said to him, if this is what you want, go for it. Don't give up. Well, where we are now, (laughs) all of his family own trucks. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All his sisters, he has two sisters, they own trucks. His sister's in the trucking industry industry now with her husband. So there you go. There you go. Cousins. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. You wow. bought everybody. That's that's great. And and Alex, I, I'll ask you. So what feedback was you getting from your families? Uh 
first one, you're just being a cheapskate and wouldn't buy nothing. Then you go into investing. What was what was the kind of feedback For me, that you got? people Yeah. thought I was like wasting my life because I wasn't going to college. People literally asked, what are you doing with your life? You're not doing anything. Um, and I mean, in the back of my mind, it was just like one plus one equals two is like if you have enough money, you don't have to report to a job. So let me just figure out how to get money. And Right. I mean, it just kept staying added. And then from my mom and stuff. She uh she supports in her own way, but she's just like, oh, but why don't you buy a brand new car now? Why don't you why don't you go to Europe? Like, you know, it's like all these big expenses, which I know will come eventually if I want those things. But in the beginning, like Lisa and Carlos are talking about, you really got to crunch down and just sacrifice. Like Lisa, you mentioned like sleeping. You guys had to sleep on the floor at one point. Like, Oh yeah, like, yeah, we did. We man, did. yeah. And that that's a crazy sacrifice. And Kirby, to your point, too, my wife just the other day said, hey, why don't we sell our bed frame and sleep on the floor? She suggested that. So we invest the money. She still wants to live this lifestyle. I'm trying to, like, move past that. <laughs> like, no. But I mean, yeah. So when you guys did that, because that was going to be my question at the beginning, but I didn't want to get too far ahead because I was just really because I love hearing those sacrifices. But like when you guys did that was that when you bought the first truck was that while you were paying the debt like at what point were you guys in that situation where you were sleeping on the floor basically as you said We started with the truck. When we started Okay, you with didn't the have truck, money. we didn't have anything. We got an apartment. Um, our apartment was in a really bad neighborhood, <laughs> really bad. They were selling drugs outside. Um, we had no credit. We, we didn't have anybody to help us, but I can say that we probably wouldn't have taken anybody's help either because we, we decided to be together. So um, our family all against us on um, us wanting to be together. Um, Right. you know, Carlos coming from another country and my parents both like, you know, what is he going to be able to give you? And I said, well, you know what? He has a good heart. And that's what I like about him. It's the way he treats me. And that's all that kept in my mind. It, I, it's weird because you always now teach your kids, you know, that you want them to be with somebody financial stable because you want the best for them. And now I understand what my mom was saying back then. But in my mind was how the person treated me. And we got our place. We had no furniture. We had nobody to help us. We had no pots and pans. We had nothing. So we got a mattress and it was a used mattress. We put a, a plastic over it and that was our place to sleep. Um, and during that time we were having children. I was pregnant and I remember the funniest part to me about the mattress is I would wake him up in the middle of the night and say, I have to go to the bathroom, but I was this big of pregnant. So he would have to get up and pick me up so we could go, I could get up to go to the bathroom. Um, but, you know, having a little bit more now and looking back, those were really fun times. Those Yeah. were, um, those were times that I think you're most close to each other. Um, you know, everybody else is against you and pushes you more close to each other. Um, and Right. that's probably why we made it. When we got married, his mom said, um, I'll congratulate you when you make a year because you're not going to make a year. And we're 29 years. <laughs> there you go man there you go But that's yeah, we great started, we started with the mattress and little by little um, started to buy things for our apartment. And then my mom said, when are you going to move from that place you're living in? And I said, when I have money, you know, I don't right have money to move right now. And um, my both parents are not alive, um, but they probably were a little bit of a blessing in the sense that my mom said, no, you've got to get out of there. And um, we... Actually, uh, they lent us $5,000 and we bought uh, our first house, which was a two bedroom, one bathroom. I think we paid $440 a month. It was like I a hear you. back then, it was like a duplex, you know? So that was our. Little by little, we started. Yeah, little by little. And That's then little that's by all little. it takes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and Alex, I mean, it's similar to your story. I mean, you didn't have to sleep on the floor. But it, that's what it was about, uh, just going through the grind. Like we always talk about, I love the process. You know, like right now, going to get this uh, property, looking at this property today, 
I'm just like the process. Once the, I get the property or acquire it, I don't even care about it no more. It's like, just send me back through the process again. Cause the process is the stuff that I enjoy. The process is the stuff that make you think, make you work when you have it. And then, yeah, once you have it set up, the money comes in and that's great. But the process is the thing that just, oh, it's it what brings you together is what makes you focus is what makes you get up in the morning. It's not, oh, it's trying to be a problem solver. That's it. Problem solver. Like I always tell Alex and when he was going through his first you know, a couple properties, and then he'll call me with a problem. I'll be like, this is stuff I like. But I would never say it to him. But when he called me with a problem, I'm like, oh, it's time for me to figure out something. That's the good part of it. And then just going through that process. And like you said, it brings you closer together because all the emotion is in it. The highs, the lows, the arguing, all yeah. that stuff is part of it. Like me and Alex, we get on here, we agree on a lot of stuff. But me and Alex argue all the time on camera. <laughs> on camera, we don't agree on nothing. But just going through the process. And it's not about, hey, I'm here to hurt your feelings. Or, hey, I'm here to make you feel bad. It's about, hey, you know I want the best for you. You want the best for me. We just going to have to go through it. But the end goal is we want the best out of each other. And that's amazing to hear. Especially in this day and age when people, people break up when... You know, they disagree about what kind of cereal you brought home <laughs> from the grocery store. So that's amazing to hear. Amazing. Sorry, Alex, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm running over. No, it's all good. Um, So when you guys got to SIDS, so 10 years paying off debt and before you got your second truck, at what point did you guys start to see maybe a little bit more momentum? Was it at the second truck or was it not until getting that third and fourth and so on? I think it was getting, I want to say getting the third truck. Getting the third truck? Yeah, the, the second truck for me was still a little scary, but we were doing it. But it, then Carlos was like, okay, well, if we do two, we can do three. And I said, do you right. think so? You know, I, I was always that, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was scared. <laughs> um, you know, like, what again, what if the driver doesn't stay? You know what? He goes, we get another driver. Carlos always had an answer to every question I had, which made it easier for me. You know, I, I trusted in him and he always figured it out. So I was the paperwork person, but he always figured out the problems. And um, so when we got that third one, that's when it hit me. We can do this. And right. that's when we both, you know, I mean, all along he was going wanting to go more. But that's when I think I was like, we could actually do this. Yeah. You know, we can get more. And we started to ask at the company, hey, can can we get more? And, you know, and with the trust and the fact that Carlos worked so hard, he was there six days a week. They gave us the opportunities. Yeah. Yep, definitely. So one thing I want to point out, too, is obviously you guys have your trucks, but speak if you can speak more on the things you had to do compared to. I would say your competition to other drivers that weren't doing certain things. What things did you guys have to do or even uh, company sacrifices you had to make um, for the company to give you those extra opportunities, those contracts? I can name some, but I want to like I, because I've helped you guys, I know, get contracts, mm -hmm. but I want you guys to speak on so people can see, you know, in business, it's not just. Oh, yeah, it's just as simple as just acquiring like you have to take different routes and prove yourself to be able to have growth. Being responsible and know what you want in life. You yeah, know? I think Carlos. Um, the being humble, the being humble, Kirby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that too. Carlos yeah. is very, Always. Carlos is, <laughs> number one yeah. right there. he, you know, our, our you kids change our kids who you so are, you know, to us, right? About right. And our kids always say that the most humble person they know is their dad. Yeah, it really is. When your kids are saying that, that's great. They don't think I'm as humble. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. I, I am humble. I think the that's difference true. that people take from me is that I'm proud of what we've yeah. done. And so right. when you're talking about it, my kids are like, you're not being humble. And I said, yes, I am. I am being humble, but I'm telling people how they can do this too you right. know and um i, I think in what the question you asked um carlos was very responsible 
I was always there taking his dispatch, making sure the guys, you know, did what they had to do on that level. But it was also at SIDS, I worked there. So it was right. also proving to them that together we can, I can still do my thing, but help him run his. And, um, you know, I hire shuttle guys, I hire their seconds. So I had to show them, I think, more that it's not a conflict of interest. I can do both. Um, and as far as drivers, we have always treated our drivers as though they were part of our family. We did, we do events at our home. We, Carlos recently, I think last year it was, last year took all his drivers out um, for Christmas, um, took them to eat. Um, we, you know, we give them bonuses and, you know, we're 1099s, but we, we do things like that um, just to show them that we appreciate everything they do, because if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be where we are. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I mean, I can, I can name some points like, so <clears throat> this is Kirby's favorite, but like, I know I've only been there to help you guys with say two of the nine. Right. And I'm sure the other seven came from the same thing, but Kirby's favorite word he always says is execute. And like every time there's a problem, you guys just go ahead and do it. I mean, it can be the most inconvenient route situation. I still remember when Carlos like had the idea, oh, like because the trailer got sent all the way to Jacksonville and it had to go like down towards Miami. He was going to have his guy drive up to Jacksonville and drive down the whole state of Florida. <laughs> I mean, there's just always, you know, instead of no, I can't do it. There's OK, let me think of a solution to the problem and come up with an answer and then execute and take right. action. And you guys always do that. I, I just wanted to point that out, too, especially for those that will watch this. But. I think that will bring opportunities in itself because people will start to realize that when you guys are always the ones to just get the job done, that opens up more doors. Yeah, we, we definitely, um, I'm, I'm a, I'm a never a no girl. I think every time you reach out, Hey Lisa, I'm like, yeah. we got it. You know, <laughs> give, give me a second, but we, yeah. I know in my head we have it, but I have to right. tell you, give me a second. Um, right, right. And we, we figure it out. Carlos and I will, move things around, you know, do whatever we need to do. Um, because it's, first of all, showing you guys that we're here for the company is what's going to help us progress within the company, but also right. help our business progress, you know? And to be honest, I do like what I'm doing. Yes, he And does. if I have to jump in the truck and finish the, the job for the night, for the day, I'll do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So for me, it's... Uh... Carlos, you're humble, but everybody needs a cheerleader for the family. So, so when your kids tell you, mom, you're not humble, you got to be the cheerleader, you know, because you've been through so much and everybody's going to just believe that it was just, you woke up one day and then you woke up with nine trucks. You know, you had a trust fund, you had a silver spoon in your mouth. Nobody wants to see the grind. And that's how it is in America, especially with social media. It's you cut on YouTube, you see somebody with a lot of money, and then it's, oh, they just got lucky. It's not lucky. It's that grind. And then it's somebody out there, and then everybody's going to think like, oh, they just, now, if they meet you today, oh, they just got nine trucks. Oh, well, of course they could be successful. But the grind is the reason why you're chilling here for the family. Not because of the success. The success was, going, it was inevitable. Because you was going to work. You was going to grind. You was going to do it. But going through those days of sleeping on the floor, you know, living in bad neighborhoods with drug dealers, not having furniture, you know, getting your first starting off your first house is a 2-1. Those are the things that champion in Chile for. So I salute you for being a cheerleader for the family. Carlos, you can stay humble, but I love cheerleaders. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead, Carlos. Go ahead. Um, She's a very humble person. Since I met her and she always, no matter what decision I take, she's always there with me. That's and amazing. That's about her. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. And Carlos has done some crazy things that I've had to be behind him on. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta just do it, you know. Life, if you don't, if you don't play the lottery ticket, you're not gonna know if you're gonna you win. Can't win. You can't win. You yeah. gotta go for it. Yeah, I can tell you some of our stuff, but we probably don't have all that time. 
<laughs> yeah, we'll get you back. We'll get you back on again. We can talk some yeah. crazy stories and different stuff. I mean, like like Alex, I mean, you know, when he when he started off, you know, when I met him, he was around 21, I think. Right, Alex? And, you know, the goal was just, you know, everybody in America's goal is just buy a house, you know. So once he bought the house, you know, everybody considered, oh, you made it. And I mean, of course, you know, he getting the pats on his back from his family and friends. I'm probably the only one that was like, oh, no, you just starting. You, you ain't did nothing yeah. yet. Let's get it. And then now, you know, look at it now. He's got other properties in Florida. Now he's going out of the state buying properties and people looking like, wait, I'm just trying to get one. And he's just going at it. It's just the grind to keep going and keep getting bigger. But one one of the last questions I got for you. So what's your end goal? So now you have nine trucks. What What's your goal to what number you're trying to get to? I don't think we don't have a specific number, um, but at SIDS right now, Alex knows they won't allow us to bring in any more right now because um, I guess it's the fear of if something happened, would Carlos take all his trucks and go somewhere else? Um, we, right. We're in it to the end um, because we really like what we do. But I think now we've discussed expanding other places. And we have been working on that. Yeah, we've been working oh, on expanding amazing. with other companies, continuing what we do with SIDS, but also trying to expand other places. So we've been reaching out to other companies and seeing what we can do to expand. You know, that's good. That's keep going. Keep yeah, going. keep going. Keep going. That's it. Going. Yeah. And, and I like the fact that you don't have the end goal. You just keep going until there's there's no such thing as, oh, it, this is enough. You know, especially when you just you just going through the process, you just going through the process. Then it it becomes more of like, OK, let's see if we can push ourselves to this limit. Let's see if we can push ourselves. Most people are scared to push themselves to any limit, but you just want to keep pushing yourself to the next limit, the next limit. Mm -hmm. Like me and Alex, we always talk back and forth. How many properties is enough? What's your number? You know, I always throw out a rent, a wild number. It's always higher than what I need, but I just go acquire. I just yeah. go acquire. And it like, up. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, so <laughs> like even. Like holidays, Christmas Eve, I'm I'm on the MLS looking. I'm texting Alice. Like, I found another one. I didn't find like three <laughs> this this week, and I'm just yeah. like, all right, let's go get another one. Let's go get another one. And it's just something else to do. And then Alex, you probably could speak on this. So we talked about the real estate side. So what was it like when you uh, went to the you know investing side when you start talking about you investing in stocks? What kind of feedback was you getting from people in stocks? Um, oh, yeah, man. yeah. Uh, we, yeah. we talk about Alex a lot at home, too, by yes. the way. Oh, you do? Oh, you do? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you yes. asking me, Kirby? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm asking The you, feedback Kirby. I got? Uh, yeah. Uh, with, yeah. Well, with stocks, that, I started with stocks. Um, mm -hmm. It's weird because I didn't get much negativity from stocks, except from, like, people that pulled their 401k out in the recession, which is their fault. But those were, like, the only people that were like, oh, don't do it. But um, stocks, I think, is such like a glamified like, oh, you're doing stocks like they think of like all the Bugattis and stuff that these stock traders have. Right. right. I'm like, OK, I'm not that. <laughs> but um, when I started buying real estate is when I got like the most negative, like people just making up comments and stuff like they had no idea what they're talking about. That was like the 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 only realm where I got the most negative feedback from not, not stock stocks was just like, people just thought like, Oh, this kid is making millions per second. Cause I'm on the stock market and it's not the case though. Right. Right. But, so at least you say, you, yeah, oh, you say ahead, you, you all talk about Alex. You say you talk about Alex. Uh, yeah. Alex <laughs> is the, yeah, Alex is the age of some of our children. So, right, right. Oh, we, you know, they every our kids know who Alex are and all the the, the managers at, at SIDS um, from us talking to them for the dispatch. But with Alex, we talk, Carlos and I always talking about Alex. We're like, wow, he's so young. He's doing good. Things, and, right? you know, I talk to him at work about the houses, you know, he's he's doing. He talks to me about investment, trying to get me to, you know, get into it. And I said, I don't understand it. And he's like, I'll help you. But um, I, I do want to say that I, I think Alex is amazing. I mean, the age that he amazing. is and what he's doing to me, looking back to my age, I, my train of thought was nowhere near what Alex is doing. Yeah. 
you know. Yeah, it, it's funny when I when I first met Alex. Uh, well, it's no. So actually, the first time and Alex don't even remember this. The first time I ever met him on the phone, I was in Afghanistan, and oh, wow. a, a friend of Alex called me, or I called him, and then Alex got on the phone. You were in Afghanistan. I was, like, I was in Afghanistan at the time. Oh wow. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was in, I was in Afghanistan, and then I talked to him, and I was like, I was like, I think he was like 17, 16 at yeah. the time, somewhere, somewhere <laughs> in that time, and I was like, all right, just keep saving your money. And uh, I'll talk to you when you get to 18. That's exactly what, I, that's the only thing I said. Not knowing how, you know, fast forward five, six years, I would move to Florida. Then I would actually meet him. But I was just thinking like, all right, he's 16, 16 year olds. They're not thinking about no real money. They just go ahead, save your money, kid. You'll be all right. And that's, that was the first time I actually talked to Alex. I was actually in Afghanistan. I was about to go out on a mission actually. When uh, That was the first time I met you when I talked to, you know, our mutual friend. And then, uh, and then fast forward, I run into Alex again years later. I'm still thinking, like, all right, he says he want it, but he really don't want it. I mean, because I'm thinking of all the, you know, 18, 19, 21-year-olds, they thinking about partying, clubbing, right. doing drugs, and all the other stuff. I mean, that's that's what I was doing when I was at age. So I was like, no, <laughs> you know, he, gotta, he gotta be doing that, right? And then, uh, so, so we met up. And then, so he started telling me what he's doing. And I told him, I said, Alex, if you don't reach a millionaire by the time you're 30, I think you're, on, I think you're a crackhead or something. Because his mindset, his mindset was where people's mindset usually get to when they in 40s or 50s. He had at a young age. I wish I didn't start till I was 28. And he had that mindset. And I was like, he can, he can do a lot of great things because people are not thinking of, of it. You know, I... You know, we always talked about the peer pressure. He gonna have friends, nobody's right. doing it. So it's gonna push him, but having that mental fortitude to push on, not fall to feel, peer pressure is amazing, especially at his age. I always think I, if you don't mind me asking, how did he get that mindset? Was it somebody in your family? Like what me? made you, yeah. No, it wasn't anybody in my family. Um, the way I got the mindset was, and it's always funny, because like people, I, I get that question a lot. Literally, the the reason why I had that mindset is so when I was 16, I started buying and reselling like military antiques. And then it taught me like, oh, I can make money rather than having a job. And so I liked that kind of freedom because I could literally just go to a show, grab inventory, sell online, and I'd have money and I could go do whatever I wanted. Mm. And so when I, I wasn't making a ton of money, but it was like, it was, I was making like around 2000 a month at like 16 years old yeah. from just selling antiques. And then when I turned 18, cause I was still living with my mom, she was like, you need a job or you need to go, you know, or you're going to start paying rent or whatever. And so I was like, no, I don't want a job. So, cause I didn't want to, cause I knew if I go to a job, I gotta be there eight hours a day. Right. And I didn't want that. Like, I hated the idea of being tied down to a company. And so when I was 18, I was like, I got to get out of this. Like, I'm already like I'm acting like I was already 50 years old into the into the rat race. <laughs> and I, and I like just turned 18 and I'm like, I don't want to be stuck in this. So um, that's when I started, like, talking to different people that I could find that knew that, like, were doing things differently. Like in my family. There weren't many people that like really retired like that truthfully had a good 401k or they had any investments to sustain themselves it was just like people living on social security and i saw how poor they were in retirement and i just wanted like my life i just wanted to be able to do whatever i wanted and so i was just trying to figure out that way of what can i do to not be dependent on a job but now, as Kirby showed me, like, it's not, you know, it's not the idea of, like, invest until you don't have to work, but invest to where if you want to work, it's a, it's a decision rather than an obligation. So you have that freedom to do so, to go to a job if you want. Yeah. Like, I, I know, I, I personally don't have to work right now. Exactly. But yeah. me either. <laughs> <laughs> no i i don't but i really i really like what i do so right yeah I, exactly you know, 
he tells me all the time, you know, you don't have to work anymore. What am I going to do here at home? So I'm like, no, I'm going to work. I like what I do. I, I feel like, um, for me, the goal is to help other people, um, the contractors that are coming in when they're getting started and they're not sure what they're doing. Well, I didn't know what I was doing for years. And I remember pulling my hair and crying because I didn't have help. I didn't know how to do my LLC. I didn't know how to do any of that. And so my goal now is to help other people that are coming in um, be able to do that. You know, when I hire the second drivers for contractors at SIDS, my mindset is I know what it's like for a truck to be sitting there and not have somebody driving it. So I try to get a driver in as quick as I can for those um, those other gentlemen that have uh, contracts. So, yeah. Cool. My last question for you guys, and uh, so I always tease Kirby on this. I always say he's bougie because he he has his own <laughs> spending limit per month. I don't even have that yet. So um, I know you guys, you guys like to go on your vacations and stuff, but how long was it? And really, because I want people to just see that it's not just like, oh, you get your first truck, you're making millions. You get your first property, you're making millions. Like, how long was it before or how many trucks did you have before you could actually like start to enjoy those leisure activities? Truthfully enjoy them like, oh, it wasn't a financial burden to go go ahead and do those things how many trucks do we have when four. we started actually Three, four trucks yeah i think i, I want i i think i'm not in agreement with carlos because i'm the one that does finance <laughs> 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 i, I want to say honestly honestly because we were buying the trucks but still paying off debt meaning our home um what we didn't tell you is our house is paid for now so okay. congratulations. Awesome. when we paid this, thank you very much. When we paid this house, um, I, I think so that's happy. when, for me, when I felt that leisure of, and we were probably okay. seven trucks in. Okay. And I know that before that it was there, but because my goal was to pay this house and be debt free. And every penny that I got, I was able to take and like save and save and save. And I think it was actually at the seventh truck. We paid off okay. our house. We actually have a picture in Facebook where we're in front of Wells Fargo. And I took a picture of him. He's jumping. He's in the air. And I didn't <laughs> post anything. I just posted that picture. And everybody was contacting me. They're like, you bought a Wells Fargo? <laughs> I'm like, no, no. Until this day, I didn't tell anybody what happened. Like sometimes you feel negativity from people. Um, you know, they don't want to see you make it. They don't want to see you happy. Um, we felt that along along the way. So I stopped telling people what we were doing and just doing it. Um, but I think for me, even though it was, it, it probably was financially earlier, it was probably like he said, maybe at that fifth or sixth truck. Um, because every truck we bought, we didn't buy it unless we could buy it cash. That's the other thing. Okay. We did Amazing. not go to the next level if it wasn't cash. Because why get back into debt to try and make it again? So, um, and the other thing I'll tell people is you definitely have to lose money to make money. Yeah. You know, that's my motto. I'm always telling him that when we're doing things with the drivers. He's like, why are we going to do that? And I said, because you got you to gotta lose money to make money. You know, and it has worked out for us. Amazing. Amazing. Awesome. All right. The, that's all. I just want to tell you one more time. Carlos, Lisa, thank you all. Are amazing. Amazing group. Uh, the the stuff that y'all had to go through was, is, I love hearing that. Hearing people that came from nothing, started with nothing, and just grinded their way through it. And then now you're on the other side. You're on the other side. You get the you get to uh, enjoy the, you know, greater things in life. You know, you don't have to worry. You don't have those everyday worries that most people have. You know, how are we going to pay the lights? How are we going to pay the utilities? How are we going to pay a mortgage? You know, uh, when you talk about paying off a house, when I paid off mine, and I, I was opposite of y'all. I was telling everybody, like, yeah, I paid off the house. Like you said, negative feedback, negative feedback. You know, people like, no, you, people literally said, no, you can't pay off a house. That's what they was telling me. Like, mm -hmm. no, you can't ever pay off a house. You have to pay it for 30 years or that's the only way you can keep a house. And I was like, 
oh, this world is so in trouble. This world yeah. is so in trouble. But again, I want to say that y'all are an amazing couple. Uh, Carlos, um, yeah, stay humble, but you, you did a lot, man. You did <laughs> You did it. And, uh, you know, I talk about me going, living in tents in Afghanistan for years, but I ain't doing six, I ain't doing six uh, days a week for 10 years for nobody. So you, you're way better man than me. You're a way better man than me. <laughs> so Melissa, keep chilling for the family because yeah. everybody needs to understand the story because y'all are the epitome of what an American dream really looks like and not what everybody's trying to push on social media. So I salute both of y'all. Thank you, Thank sir. You. I salute you. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. All that means said, stay tuned for the next one. Hopefully, we'll have you guys back on another mm -hmm. podcast. Okay. So, well, thank you. Thank you, guys. We'll Keep end going, it. Alex. Keep going. You're doing That's great. It. Yes, sir. Thank you. With all that being said, guys, we hope you really liked the video. This was probably one of our best interviews that we've done. We hope to have Carlos and Lisa back on the channel. So stay tuned for more videos. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, share. We'll see you guys on the next one.